Next, we have uses and implications of IT systems. And the list I have here, we have stock control, data logging and analysis, general office tasks, creative tasks, online advertising, manufacturing, and security. So we have IT system as being stock control and we have features and implications. So what is stock control? A stock control system is literally a system that helps you to manage and control your stock. So if we think about a shop, right? A supermarket, uh, the corner shops that we have here. If let's say they have 100 packets of crisps, if they sell 15 in a day, the stock control system at the end of the day will generate a report, will generate something that will tell them that you've sold 15 out of 100. So because you've sold 15 out of 100, you have 85 left and you might be able to, in some cases, automatically order some more to try and keep up demand because the next day they might sell 100. If their projections are on a Friday after school, kids buy more crisps, then they might want to buy 100 packets or 85 packets of crisps on a Thursday to have it ready for a Friday. So that's what stock control is. It's also really good for automatically regarding stock levels because a human counting might lose track of things, whereas a till, the till will know, okay, I have 100 of this. If I've sold 99, then I should have one left. Whereas a human might make a mistake because every day you're selling different amount of crisps, you might miscount on a few days, you might miscount on a day, and that's going to mess up the entire system. Because if someone comes in to buy something, even online as well, if someone wants to buy something and you've miscounted and they've ordered it, you're going to have some issues telling them, okay, sorry, we're out of stock. Sorry, we don't have this. We don't have that. Many stock control systems require some form of training for the staff. So staff, they have to be trained. Typically in retail stores, they give them a day or two worth of training, show them how to use a till, how to take payment, how to do refunds, how to order something if something is out of stock because, it's, because the shop should always have items. All right, next we have data login and analysis. So first of all, what is data logging? It's using... An electronic device to automatically record and monitor environmental parameters over time. Simply put, you have a sensor, maybe a temperature sensor, a heart rate monitor. You put it somewhere or attach it to someone and it simply collects that data over whatever time you've specified. Some companies or some countries, they might want to monitor um, earthquakes or they might want to monitor, uh, what's that thing called, lava. Volcanoes, that's it. They might want to monitor volcanoes, so they might have a data logging system there because it's unsafe for humans to be there sometimes. So having that there takes away the human factor. So even if a computer gets damaged, it's like, okay, we can go and put another one at some point. Whereas if a human gets hurt or killed, that's going to be a lot more impactful for people, right? Next, we have data analysis. This is simply now going over the data that you've collected using the data logging system in a systematic way. So we have some form of data. So let's say we're looking at earthquakes, right? What we might want to have is how much time is there between earthquakes, how big or how much the ground shakes or the magnitude of the earthquake. There's a systematic approach. We look for specific things within the data. So we analyze the data. That's all data analysis is we get the data, we scrub through it or look through the data to see the important things that we want. Maybe the time of day is not important. So even though it's collected time of day, we might not want that. Maybe how much rainfall there has been might not be important in this case. So simply again, Data analysis is simply analyzing, going over the data in a systematic way to pull out the information that we want. We get very accurate readings because we don't have a human sitting there writing down what they read from a thermometer as a temperature. We can have a computer cycle and every one second or every half a second, it can say the temperature is 25, the temperature is 25, the temperature is 25.1. So it's going to be a lot more accurate. So we can see the change over time a lot better compared to what a human would do. Um, just again, we don't need a human to sit there and do this stuff. So that's a big benefit there. It requires, so one good and one down of this is that we can get the data automatically, right? So I can put uh, a sensor somewhere in a volcano in the Caribbean and leave it. And I can be all the way in the UK and I can record all that data and it can be sent to me. So it has a network connection of some sort, maybe 3G, 4G, 5G. That's not important, right? However, if there is no data, um, if there is no network connectivity, if there's no internet, let's say, then I don't get that data. That data is then stuck on that device and I then have to go there and get it. In the grand scheme of things, it's still a lot better than having a human, a human being there because a human being being there could be toxic. It could be toxic for that person to be in a volcano for X amount of hours or days, right? 
Next, we have general office tasks. And here on my screen, you can see general office clerks typically do the following. Answer and transfer telephone calls or take messages. That's fine. Sort and deliver incoming mail and send outgoing mail. Let's change this to email. Now, this is something that's done by office clerks as well. They do have to tend to mail, physical mail. But I think nowadays it's moving over more to email. It's a lot cheaper for everyone, companies included. They don't have to sift through so much paper, right? When they want to send stuff out, an email is going to be a lot cheaper than posting 100,000 letters to 100,000 different people. Um, schedule appointments, again, normally you, you would have to have a little black book where you write everything in and you try to keep um, everything on time. Whereas nowadays, you link everything to your calendar in your iPhone or Android phone and it reminds you a couple hours and a couple of days before you have that meeting so you can prepare. Perfect, right? Now in the book, it says it improves efficiency. That's 100% true. The three main programs that people use in Office nowadays is actually in Microsoft Office as well. Uh, Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, and Microsoft Excel. Microsoft Word, as you hopefully know, is a word processing program. So you use it to type reports, documents in general, right? Microsoft Excel is typically used for creating graphs based on numbers so that it's easier for someone to read something. So if I have a class of 50 students, I don't want my manager seeing the individual names of every student and what grade they got. She probably, she or he probably wants to see minimum grade, maximum grade, average grade, the range. And that's it. That's all they want to see. So we need to stick to that minimum, that, that um, average as much as possible. And finally, we have PowerPoint. Now, PowerPoint is simply used to present information. That's why it's called PowerPoint presentations, right? So when you have a lot of information and you want to present it, that's a very good way to do it. It does make us more efficient because back in the days in the past, we had to do things in a much more archaic way. We would have to have a clerk in an office writing individual letters to individual customers, whereas now we can generate a report automatically based on all the addresses we have in our um, database and send it out to everyone within minutes. Even though it does make us very efficient, it will require some staff training. And um, me being a computer scientist and IT person, I am typically when I get to a new job, I'm the person that tries to help people navigate what's the best thing to use for what situation. For example, I know people that actually use Word as a PowerPoint presentation, which is a bit strange to us when you hear it, but people actually do that, right? Another thing is um, support is normally a big issue. If you're in a big company, a single person like me who does my job and maybe can do other things is not going to be enough for support. You will need an IT support team for if you're a building, if I'm uh, sorry, if you're a business, if you're a company and you have multiple people working, having simply one person dealing with all the issues is not very practical because more than likely you have multiple issues in a single day. And this happens at work every single day. So you will need that support staff. It does cost more, but the cost benefit can be um, justified. Creative task is one that has really shot up over the last couple of years, well, the last five, ten years, I would say, because it's been made so easy. Anyone in their house with a laptop, a phone, a tablet, even smart TVs now can actually edit music files, edit video files, edit images files completely free. OK, so creative tasks have been made much easier. It's actually a lot easier for um, to share the work as well. So, for example, if I edited, I don't know, a Photoshop file, I no longer have to put it on a memory stick or a CD to send it to someone to continue my work somewhere else. I can simply upload it to Adobe's cloud storage thing and continue working from wherever I go in the world. Or I can email it to myself or I can upload it to my OneDrive, my Google Drive, my iCloud, whatever I want to use and continue working from somewhere else. Now, I guess a downside of this could be the amount of storage that is required either by the individual themselves on their PC or the fact that they have to keep uploading files to some form of cloud storage. They have to keep downloading again. You do need quite a bit of storage for these services nowadays. But again, in my opinion, the cost benefit outweighs the negative of having to pay for it. What was the alternative to not pay for it and have to travel with a memory stick or a hard drive, which you could lose on the way to work or lose on the way somewhere. The data could get corrupted. Having your files backed up on multiple cloud services. I use Google Drive, OneDrive, and my phone. So worst case, if I lose my phone on the way to work, I can still go to work and continue, and continue working. There shouldn't be an issue. Now, here I am again on Amazon, and this time I'll be looking on online advertising again. The main thing we're going to be looking at here is targeted marketing. A targeted, just as if you try to specify or be very specific with what you do. And marketing, where you try to convince or show people good products for them. And targeted marketing, just bring those two things together, right? So 
here I am again on Amazon, as you can see here, keep shopping for, and I have a list of smart home things I've been looking at. So I need a smart um, thermostat so I don't have to go and turn the heating on myself. I can do it from my, um, my phone, my bed, wherever, right? Um, here I have a Amazon Fire Stick because I'm so into smart TVs. I actually don't watch live TV anymore. There's no point. I watch, I stream everything. So as you can see here, if I keep scrolling, this will show you all the stuff I've looked for in the past all the stuff I've bought in the past and it will keep showing me stuff I'm interested in. In a previous video, I explained that me, them, them showing me random stuff like makeup and jewelry is pointless because it's not something I would be interested in buying. So they keep showing me stuff I've looked at before. They keep showing me stuff they think I would be interested in. And as you can see here, almost every single thing on this page is about tech, smartwatches, smart home systems, cameras, bags, laptops, tablets. Everything here is some smart device. Now, another benefit of this is how easy it is to find the best deal. So let's just say for argument's sake, right? I wanted to look for a laptop. I'm looking for an RTX 3070 laptop. I can type it here. I simply press enter and it finds me every single RTX 3070 device. So if I decide, hmm, I actually don't want a laptop anymore because building a PC might actually be cheaper, I could go that route, right? Now, the benefit of this, again, it shows me all the deals. I don't need to go to Curry's and then eBuyer and then all these other websites. In most cases, I can find multiple deals on a single website. So the targeted marketing there for me is going to be very good. So every time I come to Amazon, it's going to show me what I want to see. Honestly, the only downside I can think of here is the amount of choice we have. Because look, I typed in RTX 3070. This is simply a new graphics card that got released sometime last year, right? And I can scroll on this page and find hundreds potentially thousands of items with the name rtx 3070 which tells me that this is too much choice for someone like me right i will sit here and i will scroll through every single one comparing prices looking at the colors making sure it doesn't have rgb because i don't like rgb it's just too much choice now that's a downside for some people and again i'm going to say in the grand scheme of things that doesn't really look like a bad thing because what's the alternative I would have to go to multiple shops to look at the same things, potentially more expensive, wasting my time and money getting there. All right, here we have manufacturing, right? So we CNC, computer numerically controlled, means that we have a computer controlling how the robot arms move. And it's very, very, very precise. They are very precise numbers. So they have to be controlled by computers. Humans wouldn't be able to do this at the rate that these can. So the first thing we can say it is more efficient. All right. Robots can work for as long as they need to work. Once you service them and give them enough power, they can work forever. Right. Next, we have hazardous tasks. So we can have a robot make stuff that humans can't make. We can have a robot in temperatures of up to I don't know, a million degrees obviously i'm being really excessive there whereas a human could not get anywhere close to those temperatures meaning when melting steel and metal and things like that we can have robots do it without even having to worry because they if they have been designed well enough to um, have resistance to, to those temperatures then it's relatively safe for them the downsides again we have loss of jobs for humans in manufacturing so we won't have as many people working in factories anymore we will simply have an assembly line, which is something like these here, of robots working. However, another downside is that robots don't deal with errors very well. These simple robots. So if something were to happen that wasn't a programmed possibility, they would not freak out, but they would have an error. So if a few of these boxes just fell off, they might have only been programmed to pick up one box. They might not have been programmed to pick up multiple boxes. Very simple example, right? Whereas a human would see some boxes fall and would simply pick it up and continue working. And that's it. Done and dusted, right? Another big thing we have is security. So anything that deals with security, the ones that I can think of straight away are like swipe cards, which people have at work. Some students have at school as well. You can only get into some sections of a building using that swipe card. Another big one is CCTV. I just ordered three of these cameras for my house simply because I want to know what's going on. If someone breaks in, I have three cameras at three different locations capturing everything that's happening and it gets uploaded to the cloud automatically so even if they were to see the cameras and damage them too late it would have already been uploaded now here in the book it's saying that it's often expensive to imp implement these security systems i don't really agree with that anymore i think this book is very outdated i would say five ten years at least more five years because 
as you can see here for 25 pounds i can get myself a smart camera which connects to my mobile phone i have been watching this video and when i was at work something happened i think one of the lights came on or some some weird thing happened and it picked up on my phone for 25 26 pounds i don't think that's particularly expensive i think that's a perfectly fine price however some of these systems can be expensive for example for me to add that door entry system to my front door would be expensive it would cost me hundreds and hundreds of pounds maybe not the best idea when keys work perfectly fine however it's something we should consider as well a lot of companies have been listening to what we've been saying so for example google smart home um, and alexa smart home stuff they actually in the past have recorded everything people have said and sent it to other people so that could be a massive privacy concern what if we're speaking about someone in not such a nice light and then they get an email with everything that you said all right so that's everything there for uses and implications of it systems and again uses comes down to what thing are we doing so for example we have stock control data logging and analysis general office tasks creative tasks online advertising manufacturing and security what thing are we doing right then we need to know um, the implications of using that type of IT system. Implications typically means positives and negatives. So what are the good that we can get or what is the good that we can get out of using a stock control system? However, what are then the downsides of using a stock control system? Um, a positive of using it again might be automatic stock recording. I don't need to... Imagine if I sold 1 million packs of crisps every month. I don't need to count how many I've sold the third week in. This will do it for me, right? However... On the, on the flip side of that, it might be more expensive than me counting it myself. I might have to pay a monthly subscription to some form of till company. It's called a uh, electronic point of sale device, by the way. EPOS, E-P-O-S, electronic point of sale device. I might have to pay some company a monthly fee to use their system to do what I want to do. However, we have to think about the positives of using the system and the negatives and see if the positives outweigh the negatives. So again, here for security, having a camera that's £26 is a very, very cheap price compared to someone breaks into my house and I have no idea what's happened, right? That's my thought.